hello and welcome to today's video today i will be teaching you how to deploy a django project to heroku so this is the basic projects that i have done and if i come to my browser we can see it's just returning a http response hello world so when i host this it's going to be accessible anywhere in the world so let's begin i have prepared a step-by-step um, -step guide that we're going to be following up onto the points that we deploy our Django projects. So the first step is, of course, to have a Django project that you are going to want to deploy. And then the next step is that we need to install two libraries. We need to install Gunicorn and Django Heroku. So please go to your command line and run the command pip install Gunicorn. So once you've uh, run that, it's going to install Gunicorn for you. And then the next command is uh, pip install django underscore heroku roku. So this is going to install the uh, library for you. So let me just clear out my terminal. The next thing that we need to do is that we need to get the current Python version that we're working with and save it into a text file named runtime.txt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this text file. Now note, the file must be created inside your root directory where you have your manage.py. So uh, just create the text file and name it runtime, runtime.txt and save it. So the next thing is that we need to run a command that is going to help us get the current Python version I'm working with. And that is Python space dash dash version. So just go to your command line and run that command. And immediately it's going to give you the current Python version that you are working with. Mine is 3.10.1. So just copy it and come to your code editor. Once you're in your code editor, locate that runtime.txt file and type exactly what I'm typing. So Python dash and then the um you are going to paste the version of python you are working with so python dash 3.10.1 once you've done that save the file and close it so the next step that we need to do is uh that we need to take is we need to create a file named proc file now note that this file has no extension so we are going to do that now and it also has to be created inside your roots directory so i'm going to say proc file now the p is in uppercase while the rest is in lowercase so i'm going to remove this .txt extension and save it so now we have a document named proc file let's go back to our code editor once we come back to our code editor we can see the icon has already showed and we can see uh, visual studio code recognizes it so the next thing that we need to do is we need to write a line of code inside this file and I'm going to be explaining how to write it. So I'm just going to come to the proc file and paste this. So you're supposed to write web space geonicon space your project name. So I'm going to clear this. My project's name is uh, host underscore tut. So I'm going to type host underscore tut here. Host underscore tut. So it's going to be web space geonicon space your project's name dot whgi colon application space dash dash log dash file space dash so once you've written all of this just make sure you save it and uh, we can close it the next step that we need to do is we need to uh we need to um get all the requirements that we are using that is all the libraries that we have used in our project and we need to save this to a text file named requirements.txt so again we'll go back to our command line and Let's run this command pip freeze. And when we run that command, we can see it's showing us a list of modules and libraries that our project is currently using. We can see Django Heroku, we can see Junicon. Those are the two libraries that we installed when we started this video. So uh, what we now need to do is that uh, we need to run another command that's going to save all this file, all these um, requirements or this list of um, items to a text file. Now, why exactly do we need to do this? We need to do this because when we're uploading our project or when we're deploying our project to Heroku, Heroku needs uh, this list of requirements because it needs to know the proper libraries to in install so that our libraries, so that our projects can work properly on the web. 
So we're going to say pip freeze and we will say angle brackets requirement does txt. Now take note that it is requirements. So it's going to save all this to a text file. And if we come back to our code editor and open this requirements.txt, we can see that everything has been saved to this text file. So the next step that we need to do is that we need to add some lines of code to our settings.py. We need to import OS, import Django Heroku, and import DJ database URL. So go to your settings.py and at the top, you need to import these libraries. So I uh, just import OS, import Django Heroku and database and um, DJ database URL. And we also need to set up our static files inside our settings. So scroll to the bottom of your settings.py file and write these two lines of code, this line 31, line 131 and line 132. So just write these lines and it's going to set up your static files for you. So, and then the last line that we need to add is this line 134, Django underscore Heroku dot settings, then in parentheses, passing locals. So once you've done this, just save this file and close it. That is all we need to do in our settings. Then the next thing we need to do is that we need to now download Git because we're going to be opening our projects or we're going to be deploying our project to Heroku through Git and GitHub or using Git and GitHub. So go to your uh, browser and search for download Git. Now hit this first link that comes up. When it loads, you can see uh, there are different versions depending on the operating system you are using. So if you're using Mac OS or just download it, if you're using Linux, click here. And if you're using Windows, click here. I already have it installed, so I am not going to uh, click install. So once you've downloaded it, just go to your downloads folder and look for the executable file, double click it and install it. Now when you run the installer, make sure that this bash here is ticked. So just keep clicking next, 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 next and then install it. By default, it should be clicked anyway. So just keep hitting next, next, next and install the git on your computer system. So once you've installed it, the next step that we need to do, that, that we need to take is that we need to create and Heroku account. So that is step seven. Go to your uh, your browser and search for uh, Heroku.com. So once you've done this, it's going to open Heroku. Now, since I already have an account and I am logged in, it's going to bring me to this page. But you should, but you should go ahead and create um, an account and log in. So once you've logged in, uh, you are going to see uh, your your browser is going to look exactly like this, only that all these things here are not going to show. Now, these are called apps in Heroku. They individually house different projects. So what we are now going to do is, okay, after we've created our Heroku um, account and we have logged in, the next step that we're going to take is that we need to create a new application on Heroku. So how do you create a new application? We will just come over here to this new uh, button and click it. Once you click it, click create new app. Now, I want you to take note of something. In this app name, you need to pick something that, you need to choose uh, a name that hasn't been picked by anyone else. Because if I say blog now, it's going to tell me that blog is not available because someone somewhere in the world has already used this name to create an app in Heroku. So if I now change it to blog app, it still says it's not available. But if I, but if I now change it to blog app DJ, which is blog app Django. We can see blog app DJ is available. So just keep trying until you see something that is available. And then this region, just leave it as United States. Once you are done, just click uh, create app. So this is going to create the app for you and it's going to bring you to this place. So the next step that we need to take is that we need to create a GitHub account. So uh, GitHub basically is where we're going to be hosting or saving all our code online. So if you don't have a GitHub account, just create a GitHub account. And this creating a Heroku account thing was for people that they didn't have a Heroku account. So uh, we need to create a GitHub um, account now. So just say um, create GitHub account and hit this first link. Uh, join github. So when you do that, it's going to take you to a page and you can just fill in the form 
create your account and login so once you log in the page is going to look uh, exactly like this so the next step that we need to take is we need to create a new github um, github repository how do you create a new github repository now there are two ways you can do this we can come to this plus icon here click it and hit new repository or we can just come to this more direct approach and hit this green button which is new so once you hit that it's going to bring you to this page and you can pick what repository name you want so i'm going to name mine blog app so you can see it tells me that okay it's available then you can now decide to put a description of your project and you can choose to make it either public or private when it's public anybody can come to this repo and see your code but if it's private only you can come and see your code so let's just hit create repository so once you've done that we're now going to be following these steps that github has given us now take note remember earlier that we created um we when you installed git um, you had to make sure that git bash share was ticked so this is where we are going to be using git bash share i'm also going to be following this um command so basically what we want to do now is that all the code that we have here everything inside this uh our root directory we want to push everything to this uh, our repository that we've created so when we've done that and when we now reload the page we're going to see that all the files and folders that are inside our root directory would have been saved online here so let's do that now the first thing that we need to do is come to our root directory right click and look for git bash here just click git bash share and then let me just zoom in to make sure you can see it so once you've hit git bash share let's go back to the uh um the directions that they've given us so we're first going to run this command git in it so let me go back to the uh folder so that you can see what happens when we run this command so when i uh paste this command and run is git in it take note of what happens we're going to see a new folder has been created dot git so let's now control continue following the steps that they've given us what we now need to say next is that we need to say git add space dot that is well, i want you to gather all everything inside this folder just gather everything and take note of, take note of everything inside this folder and the next command we need to run is this one that they've given us here git commit space dash m uh, so i'm just going to paste that and press enter so uh the next command is this git branch dash m main so i'm also going to copy that paste it and run this command then the next command i'm going to run is also this one i will copy it come to my uh, git terminal paste it and run it and then the last command is this git push dash u origin main so i would copy it uh come here and paste it so once i press enter it's going to push all this let me enlarge it it's going to push all of our uh, code and everything all the directories from here to the repository once we reload this page now you are going to see that every single thing as you can see every single thing has been pushed and saved on or in this repository so we have the host to it host host our proc file so basically everything here has been saved in this repo so the next step that we need to take is that we need to now go back to heroku and we need to deploy via github so let's go back to this tab where um this tab that heroku gave us after we created our app so i want you to just move to deploy that's from here this deploy make sure you're in deploy i want to in deploy scroll down and come to github connect to github once you're in connect to github i want you to just connect your uh, repo and connect your github account to this place mine is already connected so uh there is no need for me to connect it again the account that you just created if you didn't have an account earlier so just come here and connect your github to uh heroku now once you've done that we now need to search for the repo name that is this particular repo that we just created the one we just created now and saved all these folders and files to we need to search for it and the name is blog app so i'm going to say blog app and i'm going to click search 
So what it does is that it's going to go to our GitHub account and search for this particular repository. Once it has seen the repository, it's going to bring this out. So just hit connect. So basically, while hosting it through GitHub, it's going to go to GitHub, go to uh, our code and host it from here on Heroku. So I'm going to hit deploy branch. So after hitting deploy branch, this is the moment of truth. It's going to start installing. You can see it's installing all the requirements. It's installing Python. It's installing uh, Junicorn, White Noise. Uh, basically, all the requirements that we put inside the requirements.txt file. And you can see uh, it's saying compressing and it will soon be done. This is the moment of truth. So it has said done and it's launching our project. Now take note that this is the one that we uh, that I did in, on my local server. Now if we go back to the app, we are going to see that, that oh sorry, if we go back to Heroku the tab, we are going to see that it tells us that your app was successfully deployed. And if you want to view this um, page, your app, just click view. And then as you can see, it has taken me to a whole new page. Let me zoom in. And then we can see that is the exact same thing, only that my website is already live. It's presently live now, and I can visit it on any device anywhere in the world. So that is how to host your Django project on Heroku. If this video was helpful and you found it, uh, should I say interesting, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back for more. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to deploy a... Django project that is connected to a Postgres database on Heroku. And I'm also going to teach you how to um, switch from the default um, SQLite database to Postgres in Django. Thank you for watching my video. Stay blessed and come back for more.